All right, guys, how's it going? Welcome back. I get asked for car suggestions all the time. I'm not complaining, I'm actually quite flattered. The most frequent question I'm asked is, hey Matt, what's the best family SUV to buy with seven seats? My answer is always the same. It's the second generation Kia Sorento. The first generation Kia Sorento ran from 2003 until 2009, and it was a great workhorse. It was a real rough and ready truck, but that's not the one I'm recommending. The one I'm recommending is the second generation, which ran from 2009 until 2014. I just think they're a great practical family car. Firstly, it's quite a good looking thing. I mean, I don't bite the back of my hand every time I see one, but it's quite a handsome thing. Especially the facelift model like the one I'm in today, which ran from late 2012 onwards. It's also quite inoffensive, which in today's mad world is a good thing. From every angle, it looks right. You could argue that it's a bit forgettable, but I take that every day over something that tries too hard to be quirky. These days you see so many Nissan Qashqai's on the road, but from my personal experience, this second generation Kia Sorento is better in every measurable way. And this is also available as a seven seater, so it's great for a growing family. With the two rear seats folded flat, you get a decent sized boot as well at 531 liters. There's plenty of room inside, plenty of headroom, plenty of leg room, plenty of elbow room. It's the same story in the middle row as well. Although the sixth and seventh seat are really only suitable for teenagers at best. It just feels like a safe, sturdy, substantial car. I'd be quite happy to put my children in this, if I had any of course. You get Isofix points in the back, six airbags, and it scored top marks on its Euro NCAP safety rating. In addition to that, visibility is superb. You get nice big door mirrors. You can see over the bonnet. It's a really easy car to place. The actual driving position is very good and everything's within easy reach. The seats are very comfortable and supportive and they're heated. Perfect for a miserable day like today. You get a nice comfortable armrest which is clad in leather and under that you get a massive storage compartment. You can just tell it's been designed for real life. There are no fads or gimmicks. I think that's what I like most about it. There's nothing groundbreaking but it all works. In this KX2 sat-nav model you get, you guessed it, sat-nav, but you also get heated leather seats, powerful mirrors, Bluetooth connectivity, USB points, auxiliary points, you really don't need anything else. The touchscreen is a little bit fussy as they often are and I'm not sure I'd ever use the sat-nav. In fact I don't think I've ever used a car's built-in sat-nav, Google Maps is far better. I remember years ago I was selling a 2001 Lexus RX 300 on a Y and it had done about 175,000 miles. It was, it was all right. I think I paid about 1,200 pounds for it. And I had it on at 1995. Anyway, I got a call on it from a guy and he needed some sort of big car to pick his grandchildren up from school. So I thought, this is perfect. Anyway, he came, looked around it. And then after a while, he came back into the office and said, mm, no, it's not for me, thanks. The sat-nav doesn't work. I didn't even know it had it. I said, all right, okay, well, I didn't know it had sat-nav. Anyway, he left. I went back out to the car and it had this tiny little screen with the grainiest of image. I thought, can you imagine relying on that to get you home? You just got no chance. Anyway, it was a deal breaker apparently. Now it's as queer as folk, as they say. Anyway, back to the Sorento. In the highest spec KX3 and KX4 models, you get even more toys. You get a full-size sunroof, keyless start, a heated steering wheel. I would recommend that you go for at least a KX2 model though, so you get some luxury. It's all quite nicely finished as well. I mean, you never for a minute think that you're in a luxury car, but it's all quite good. And most of all, it feels durable and hard wearing, which is perfect for a young family. Pretty much everything in here you could wipe down easily. I know this is a bit of a cliche when talking about cars, but it's genuinely not a bad place to be. It'd make a decent car for a road trip, this. You might be wondering what's under the bonnet. Well, here in the UK, there are only two options available. A 2.2 litre four-cylinder turbo diesel or a 2.4 litre petrol. Hardly anybody went for the petrol though because the diesel does quite a good job. It'll do 30 miles per gallon round town, 50 on a motorway run, and up to an average 40 combined, so not bad really. It is a bit noisy and clattery when it's cold, but there are worse cars. The road tax isn't exactly low at 265 pounds a year, but at least it's not in the highest bracket like a Discovery would be. Not that you probably care, but this will do naught to 60 in around nine and a half seconds. So it does feel punchy enough. It's got a top speed of 118 miles an hour. Sitting here at 60 miles an hour, there is a bit of wind and road noise, but you'd expect that in this kind of car. Four wheel drive cars are always a bit noisier than a standard car, and it's not exactly the most aerodynamic thing as we cut through the air. The steering's very light and easy to use. It's just a very easy car to drive. In fact, a couple of winters ago when we had some bad snow, I lent one of these to my mum. 
can't remember the car she had at the time. I think she had a Lexus, a rear wheel drive Lexus or something at the time and was worried about the snow. So for a week or so we had some bad weather, I lent her an automatic Sorento. She loved it. It's just all very sensible, but crucially it doesn't feel too boring. All KX models have permanent four wheel drive. Not that you'll ever take it off road, but it does give you a bit of reassurance in the winter. You could go for a six speed manual, but personally I'd go for this six speed auto. It's just easier to live with. It's quite a pleasant car to drive and be in. There's not much body roll. It's neither too soft nor too firm. It's just good. That's it. You probably know this already, but from new, Kia's come with a seven year or 100,000 mile warranty, which is the best thing Kia have ever done. But you might be wondering what they're like out of warranty. Well, fortunately for you, I've had dozens of these cars, so I'm pretty well placed to tell you what they're like. So in no particular order, here are some of the things which can go wrong. If you go for a manual, the clutches are quite weak. You'll end up replacing it every 70 or 80,000 miles, and they have a dual mass flywheel, so the total job will be about 800 pounds. If you go for one of the high spec models with a sunroof, I guarantee it will jam. That's simply because they're hardly used in the UK because the weather's mostly like this. So make sure you grease up the tracks regularly, then you shouldn't have a problem. If your Sorento has a reversing camera, then that probably won't work. I've had loads of these over the years and I've had loads of issues with them. Over time, they start to get blurry as if it's got a cataract and a replacement unit's about 500 pounds. Therefore, I'd rather have one like this, which has reverse sensors, far less to go wrong. The keys, which have one of those switch blade, or is it flick blade? Can't remember the name, but they always seem to break. Fortunately, you can reshell them for about £25. If you go for a high spec KX4 model, then they're keyless, so you don't have that issue. Now, this next issue with the Sorento I've only had once, so I can't say if it's a common thing or just a one off, but I had a dodgy fuel sender unit. The gauge was showing that I had a quarter of a tank of fuel, when in actual fact I had none, and I broke down on the M60. Completely ran dry of fuel. I was stood on the side of the M60 for about three hours waiting for a recovery truck, which meant that I missed the Man City game which I was driving to. But like I say, I've only had that issue once, so I can't say that's a common thing. And it was quite a cheap fix. The sender unit wasn't that expensive. These facelift models have a better gear selector, but the pre-facelift models have the old-fashioned style auto gear selector. And they can get quite stiff getting them out to park, so you need to go to an auto gearbox specialist and get them to lubricate it. I've had that happen a few times with Kia, so that is quite a common issue. But that's it. They're a really reliable car. As long as you change the oil regularly, you shouldn't have any issues with the timing chain. That's right, they have a timing chain rather than a timing belt, so that doesn't need to be replaced. They are genuinely dependable. I've got much more faith in these than a Mitsubishi Outlander or a Nissan Qashqai or a Renault Kajar. These are far better. That's purely based on my experience, by the way, which is all I've got to work with. Because it's a diesel, and I always preach this, I'd recommend that every other fill-up, you fill it full of premium diesel, like Shell V-Power or something like that. Just helps to keep things clean and running well. Also, if you go for an automatic, I'd recommend that you get the gearbox serviced at 80 or 90,000 miles. That isn't a big job, it should cost you about 150 quid. As long as you look after them like that, you should have a really safe, reliable family car that you can rough up a little bit. For the money, I honestly can't recommend anything better. Speaking of money, used prices here in the UK start at around £5,000, but that's going to get you an early 2000 and late 2009, early 2010 with high mileage. To be fair, that wouldn't necessarily put me off, because I've had a few of these arrive with us in parts exchange that have done 150, 160,000 miles, and they're still going strong. But if you can stretch to about £10,000, then you'll get yourself a nice facelift model with around 100,000 miles on the clock. One like this, this is a 2014 KX2 sat-nav with 61,000 miles on the clock. This will set you back £13,500. They're just really good value. In fact, I think I'll do a video soon where I talk about the best value used SUVs to buy. But this might be a bit of a spoiler alert because I genuinely think the Sorento is one of the best ones you can buy. Well, I think that's about it then. So, thank you once again for watching. Make sure you give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't done already. You can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. I'll leave the link below. If you've got any comments or questions, then let me know below. I'll do my best to get back to you. If you're interested in getting into the used car business, then check out my online course. I've created an online platform with nearly 100 videos which explain every single aspect of the used motor trade. Where to start, funding options, sourcing cars, preparing cars for sale. It's all there, so do check it out. So yeah, cheers guys. See you next time.